Hey, Cody, John Scott, good to see you. Good to see you. What's going on? Uh, not too much. Love your dogs, by the way. Love them. Oh, appreciate they, it. Appreciate they, that. They're great. I got mine right right next to me, taking a little snooze. Um, <laughs> I asked you the same question a year ago, uh, so I'll lead off with it once again. What is your preference? Is it to play tackle or, or be a guard? Uh, my preference is to do whatever the team needs. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and pick and choose my position. Um, you know, the coaches are going to put the best five on the field and wherever – Whoever they feel that is and wherever positions they, they think that everybody needs to play, you know, they're going to make the ultimate decision. Uh, it's not up to me at all. From a development standpoint, what are the challenges of, of trying to get better, especially knowing the league after being through your rookie season? What are the challenges of, of continuing your development w when trying to, to do so at, at two different spots? Uh, I mean, it's really not even a challenge, you know. Um, I mean – during the off season, just one of those things where, you know, versatility is a, is a big key in how you can play in, in the position um, in a, any level at any team, you know. So you don't want to limit yourself to just working on one position on one side, you know. So in the off season is where you can get, you know, you can work on the left side more than actually your right. Or you can, if you're a left side guy, you can work more on the right than you are on the left. That way, if there's any incidents or, you know, whatever happens, you're ready to go. Thanks. Hey, Cody, it's Josh Reed, um, CBS station here in Buffalo. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you. Thanks for taking a little bit of time. Um, I had a chance to talk to Dion Dawkins a little bit yesterday. Dion, I don't know if you know this or not, but Dion played some guard at the Senior Bowl. Obviously, is now a tackle. So he, he's kind of done that whole guard, tackle, flip-flop thing. He said that one of the nice things about playing guard is – you you have guys on each side of you. So you feel like there's, you know, there's some protection, if you will. What, um, what's the biggest kind of maybe upside or downside to that flip-flop back from guard to tackle? And in your mind, how do you switch things off and on? Uh, I mean, Deion, Deion's right. You know, you go inside, you have, you have a guy on your, uh, your left and your right. Um, so there's things that you can do that you can't do on the outside if you're a tackle. Uh, I mean, there's things that you can do at tackle that you can't do at guard. So, I mean, either, each position has its pros and its cons. Uh, I mean, and whenever you're at guard, you're going to have a, a certain mindset. Whenever you're at tackle, you got to have a certain mindset. And that's just the way that you got to look at it. If I can, can you, can you maybe elaborate on that a little bit? What's your mindset when you're at tackle versus your mindset maybe when you're at guard? Uh, I mean, when I'm a guard or, I mean, I feel like anybody who has ever – play guard, you know, I can probably, if I have, you know, protection on my, my inside, I can probably be a little more aggressive uh, on the outside. But if I'm at tackle, you know, I may be in a one-on-one -on -one situation where everybody's going away and I may be on the high side or I may be just on the man side. So, I mean, there's certain things that you can't do in a certain position that you're in. Awesome. Great stuff, Cody. Thank you so much. Have a good day. You too. Hey, Cody, you guys almost returned all of your offensive linemen this season. Of, of course, John's out with an injury, and he'll be back. Uh, you have four guys returning, including yourself. How do you think that'll help for the chemistry this year, or do you think it's just going to be tougher, again, because it's not all five of you entering week one together? Uh, you know, uh, having all of us back early on, it was, it was going to be a, a huge step in this year's uh, success, you know. A lot of guys, you know, we, we have a lot of good, uh, you know, bonds and friendships that we built last year through the room. Uh, and losing John, you know, is a big, big part of that. You know, he's a leader. He's got um, a bunch of experience. Uh, and I know for me last year, he helped, he helped my game a lot. And uh, so, I mean, he, losing him is going to hurt a little bit. But, you know, we have a strong relationship in the room between everybody to where, you know, I don't think we'll miss a step or we'll fall backwards in this case. And now that you're entering your second season in the NFL, I know you're pretty much going since your senior year uh, into your rookie season. So you, you finally got a chance to breathe and relax and reflect a little bit this off season. So how do you feel entering your second year? Uh, do you feel like the game has slowed down? Do you feel uh, like you've done anything in the off season that will help you in your second year? Yeah. I mean, this off season was uh... I don't think it was any like by like anybody else's 
offseason after the rookie year, except the rookie class that I was in. Um, but, I mean, this was my first true offseason that I've had since playing football, you know. In high school, you go to spring practice in, uh, in April. Uh, you have spring workouts with the team up until that point, and the same for college. Um, so, I mean, it's really like you can't even, you know, lock in on what you need to lock in on, stuff like that. Because, I mean, at that point, you still have school, you still have class. Um, so, I mean, this offseason was a true, like, you know, offseason where I can get in with somebody, I can get in with an O-line specialist, and we can just go to work on finding the details that, you know, I need to work on. Awesome. Thanks, Cody. Hey, Cody, uh, Matt Prino from Syracuse.com. Thanks for taking the time today. Uh, I just wanted to get, uh, first of all, your early impressions of, of Brian Winters, who comes in here and, and, and right off the bat has more starts than anybody on the offensive line. It's got to be cool to add somebody with that kind of experience. What are your early impressions? Of him? Uh, you know, from I think from the first day he's come in, you know, he hasn't tried to step on anybody's toes, which is, you know, a good thing. Um, he's come in, you know, he's even – trying to speak out a little bit as far as, you know, techniques and stuff. So, you know, he's taking that, that leadership role, you know, but now he's not, he's not overdoing it. You know, he's just take, he's coming in slow, you know, and when we're at practice, you know, there's certain things that he, he knows about as far as techniques. I mean, like you said, he's got a bunch of starts. Um, so he's got a bunch of games in him and, you know, he's seen things that, you know, maybe even some of our older guys haven't even seen. So it's good to, you know, get some feedback from him. And finally, um, he mentioned that Bobby Johnson played a big role in him coming here and the respect that Bobby has garnered around the league. I mean, do you talk to people that you know around the league and, and, and even within the Bills locker room about, you know, the job that Bobby's done, not only internally, but now the, um, you know, how people think of the Bills and this offensive line around the league? Yeah, definitely. Uh, especially in the offseason, you know, I had a lot of people, especially because I went back to uh, to, to Oklahoma where I, I played uh, football at. And, you know, a lot of those guys, they were like, yo, y'all are y'all are doing some big things up there. And they were like, I mean, compared to what it's been and then now, I mean, y'all, y'all's old line has really taken a big step. And I think it's all, it's all truth to, to Bobby. You know, he's done, he's done an amazing job. You know, he's one of those coaches to where he, he doesn't just explain things to, you, you know, he tells you why and he tells you, you know, what's the reasoning behind everything. He doesn't, he just doesn't expect you to do anything without the reasoning behind it. Awesome. Thanks, Cody. Corey Ford, good morning. Mookie Hawkins, One Four Sports 1080. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good, man. Hey, you, you, you walked in, you know, you fresh off of surgery, man. How was it, how difficult was it for you to, you know, maintain conditioning and stay in shape, you know, going through that uh, rehab process? Uh, I mean, early on, it wasn't even, it wasn't even too bad. Um, because, I mean, early on, like, I got the surgery in January. Um, I stayed up here in Buffalo until March. So, for 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 the most part, for the majority of the, you know, important stages of the recovery process, I was, you know, getting hands-on treatment, hands-on conditioning and stuff like that. So, and then, you know, quarantine kind of happened and, like, COVID hit some spikes. So, I went back to my off-season uh, location. And, you know, it became a trust thing between me and the training staff and, and the front office of, it. hey, if you're doing the right things and you're, you know, taking care of your body, we won't, we won't force you to get back. And that was the biggest thing that I wanted to do is, you know, show them my, I'm a professional. I can, I can take care of myself. And, you know, I was, that was the biggest thing going on. And then once I came back in June, you know, it was, it was full, full throttle. You know, I hit the ground running with, with uh, the strength staff and, even got back in the training room. Excellent, excellent. Now, uh, you know, we got Josh Allen. Everybody's talking about Josh Allen and Steph Diggs and this passing game. But I know you linemen, you know, y'all love the running game. Y'all love to mow that lawn. So care to talk about, you know, Motor Singletary, Zach Moss in the run game. Expectations. Uh, I mean, we saw a lot of good things from Motor last year. Uh, I remember the one, two plays, you know, he had against, he had one against Philly where he, on the screen, I think it was, and then he hits the dude with a, a hezzy, and then he goes in to score, and then we play Washington, and he he breaks the dude's ankle like he's Allen Iverson, you know. I mean, he's going to he's gonna do some good things this year, too. And, you know, even just seeing, you know, Sprouts of Zach in practice and walkthroughs, he's going to he's gonna have a good season, I feel like. I know you guys can't wait to mow that lawn for those two guys, man. Good luck this year. Thank you. 
Yes, good morning, Cody. George Radney, Challenger Community News. Uh, uh, question for you on your technique after surgery. Have you had much time to work on your technique to improve your technique uh, for this upcoming season? Yeah, uh, I mean, like I said, surgery, I mean, for the most part, I was up here for, for Buff in Buffalo. Um, and then at that point, there wasn't anything I could really do as far as, you know, hitting a bag or hitting, like even throwing a strike on anything. Um, but once I got to my off-season location, I got in with my uh, O-line guy. At this point, the shoulder was pretty strong. You know, I had done all of my rehab every day. You know, two, three times a day I was doing rehab. So I was kind of in the position to where, you know, I could do a little more, but I wasn't – I still wasn't even throwing strikes or punches. Um, and that was the biggest thing was, you know, half the technique comes from your feet. And that was that was my most thing I was working on was just my footwork and, you know, where my – what my leverage would be as far as this block compared to this block. You guys, I know you guys didn't do a lot of like, for example, screen passes where you really have to use your feet and get out there and in, in front. Do you see more of that maybe in uh, for this coming season, possibly being able to to, to pull more and have more uh, screen type plays? Uh, I mean, you know, we have a, a full playbook. I mean, I can't really get into what we're going to run this year, um, but I mean, you know, there's things that require different type of footwork and things like that. And, you know, I think the guys that we have in the room can handle anything that's thrown at us. Great. Hey, thanks a lot, Cody. Good luck this season. Thank you. Hi, Cody. Sal Capaccio, WGR Radio here. Good to see you. Thanks for doing this today. Um, what'd you learn about the NFL last year? Uh, what'd you learn, whether it's off the field or on the field, transition uh, from college to the NFL? What was your biggest takeaway in things? Maybe even something that, you know, you didn't expect that surprised you. Uh, when they say it's a long season, it's a long season. Uh, I mean, I had I hadn't played that much football in my entire life. Um, you know, from you know finishing the bowl game in January to you know going from combine training to the combine to you know OTAs, which start in April, um, go into June, and then you're off for one month, and then you go training camp, which is a different animal. Especially, you know, we we like to compete in training camp. Um, so that's what we do. And then you got four preseason games and then it's a full 16 games right there. That's 20 games. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in a college season, you're, you're lucky to play 13. And, you know, we were, we're, our goal is to, you know, make the playoffs and go further and you know which we did. So that's a, that's another game right there. And I mean, I had, I had no idea it was going to actually be that long. I mean, that, that right there in itself was a, a big eye opening. Thanks Cody. All right, thanks, Cody. That's it for today. Thanks, guys. All right, thank you. Like it? Yeah, not bad. Is it better?